newcomers to Friends, uh, and sometimes friends that have been in the Society of Friends for many years, are sometimes puzzled why so many Quakers seem to be really uh, uh, hung up about our history and uh, uh, Quaker biographies and things like that. I think it's because, you see, we have no creed. Uh, we're, we don't we don't distill our faith into doctrines uh, uh, that sort of stand outside of history and uh, can be recited uh, um, at any time. So our our Quaker spirituality is is uh, non doctrinal, but but theological in the best sense of the word. Uh, in a narrative story and history uh, way that is very rich. Uh, I'm Doug Gwynn, uh, and uh, I am a Friends minister, which in my life has turned out to be a Friends pastor, a writer, uh, in Quaker history and thought, and uh, uh, a traveling minister among friends. If we have a theology, I would say that it's a narrative theology, which is a fairly contemporary uh, term uh, that means simply uh, a theology or an understanding of God that, that unfolds through story. Because we are a religion of experience, uh, and what canst thou say of your own experience? Uh, that necessarily unfolds in story. And we read uh, the great uh, biographies or journals of friends often uh, uh, because they are they're inspiring stories and they, they cause us to reflect upon our own lives and our own experience in, in fresh ways that we might not have thought of otherwise. It's also, particularly as you get from biography to uh, history, then it's all this mix of how our faith is interacting with changes in society and injustices and wars and all sorts of things that we've had to st struggle with and find creative responses to. Or Quaker history can help us see, uh, look at a current dilemma of, for friends uh, uh, and see how previous generations of friends uh, responded to a similar dilemma. Um, Sometimes we find that we're dealing better with a certain social issue than friends did uh, 200 years ago, or maybe we're not doing it as well. And we see some heroic uh, and prophetic lives uh, being played out that we can use as models and inspirations for our own lives and the lives of our own meetings. So I think there's something very rich to being uh, interested in our in our history because Quakers have a, a unique trajectory through time uh, and it encourages each of us to live our own lives more uniquely and spirit-led. Most people find the Journal of John Woolman most, most uh, inspiring. Uh, he was a 18th century colonial New Jersey friends minister in the non-professional sense uh, of the word in our tradition that uh, led him to travel among friends and visit among Native Americans and work for the abolition of slavery and things that, that he did from a very deeply uh, centered spiritual place and uh, life journey uh, that can still inspire many of us today. So the Journal of John Woolman, uh, even though it's far back in time, still inspires many friends and, and others today. The Journal of George Fox is uh, a bigger challenge. 
a, a, a personality, something more like the Apostle Paul, who uh, challenges many people, uh, at least on the level of personality, if not ideas. Uh, so that's a more acquired taste. The best short history I know that, that comes up close to the present would be John Punchin's uh, History of Friends, uh, Portrait in Grey. Um, John Punchin was a, a, an English friend uh, who also taught over uh, in the United States among friends quite a bit as well. And he wrote a nice, reasonably short one-volume history. Uh, a little bit longer uh, history, the, uh, a book called The Quakers by Hugh Barber and Jer Jerry or Will William Frost uh, um, is also a another good one-volume uh, introduction to Quaker history. And it's just, yeah, you'll find a lot to, a lot to chew on with, with either of those uh, books. Thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release new videos every Thursday. You can subscribe to the channel over here. You can support us for as little as $1 per video. That link is below me, and you can find all the videos we've ever released down here. This week, there's a link in the video description that includes some popular Quaker titles to get you started, including some of the books that Doug mentioned in the interview.